Welcome to our triple dub presentation, Match Metadata Aware Text Classification in a Large Hierarchy. I'm Yu Zhang from UIUC. Uh, this is a joint work with researchers from the Microsoft Academic Team at Microsoft Research Redmond. So first, let me introduce the motivation of our study. Microsoft Academic has a web-scale collection of scientific publications, and our study is motivated by two observations in this collection. First, the volume of publications has doubled every 12 years, reaching in total 240 million by 2019. Second, by February 2021, more than 200,000 papers on COVID-19 had already been generated. So the explosion in publications makes the mission of tracking related literature impossible, requiring an accurate classification of them into different levels of topics. Therefore, the task of this paper is to automatically predict the relevant labels of given documents. We show an example from the scientific paper domain. Uh, this is a classic paper graph structure in the web published in triple dub 2000 and we can see its related topics here uh, including both uh, coarse grained ones like computer science and the world wide web and fine green labels like web graph and the power law degree distribution our task is related to two lines of previous studies the first line is large scale multi label text classification which has lots of previous studies uh, utilizing various architectures like convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks, and transformers. The second line is hierarchical text classification, which takes a label hierarchy as input and use techniques like hierarchical regularization or a hierarchy aware neural architecture. However, in real world applications, uh, there are two widely available signals. The first one is metadata. We know uh, these two lines of previous studies, most of the work only consider plain text of a document. However, documents on the web are usually accompanied by metadata signals. For example, for academic papers, uh, there are venues, authors, and references. However, these signals are largely unexplored. Second, the label hierarchy has either been left out or used in a very small label space. For example, in these previous works, they usually use several hundred to several thousand labels. However, in real cases, like for the Amazon product catalog or the mesh taxonomy for medical papers, the label hierarchy has uh, tens of thousands of labels. And for Microsoft academic taxonomy, the size is even larger. It has hundreds of thousands of labels. So it is quite natural for us to think about using these two signals in text classification. We show another example here. Uh, it's a paper on PubMed. And we can see that here metadata serves as strong topic indicators. For example, the venue Lancet indicates the paper is most likely related to medicine. And if we look at references, the first three publications it cites would indicate the paper's relevance to epidemiology, which is more specific than the venue information. And also authors often show consistent research interests, which, which could be another strong indicator of topics. And we also show a segment of the large-scale mesh hierarchy here, where we can see that label hierarchy actually reflects label intercorrelation. For example, uh, we can see the node eye infections is a child of the node infections. Therefore, uh, for a paper, the high prediction confidence in eye infections for one paper is also a strong indicator of the label infections. Uh, this idea will benefit topics with sparse training data. Based on the previous ideas, we define our task as follows. So the input is a training corpus and the label space. 
Each document in the training corpus is associated with its text, which is modeled as a sequence of words. So if a document has multiple uh, text fields, we simply concatenate them into one sequence. And the document is also associated with its metadata instances and the relevant labels, where labels are organized into a DAG structured hierarchy. And the output should be a multi-label classifier that maps a document to a set of relevant labels. So based on the problem definition, we show our match solution. Let me first give an overview of the framework. Our match framework has three major components. The first one is metadata aware embedding pre-training, which embeds metadata instances and the words into the same latent space. The second component is a transformer-based encoder, which captures all the pairwise relationships between words and metadata so that it can produce expressive representation for each document. And after prediction, the third part is hypernomy regularization, which regularizes the parameters and output probability of each child label by its parents. The first module is metadata aware embedding pre training. Uh, previous studies usually use existing pre training embeddings, for example, Glovi and Word2Vec, as the initial input because they only consider text in text classification. However, in our task, it is also required to capture the relationships between text and its metadata, and preferably to have them embedded in the same latent space. To achieve this goal, we model four types of relationships in each document. They are document metadata, document label, document word, and word context. We use marginal-based ranking loss to model each relationship. And in this case, our embedding learning can be cast as a joint optimization problem. After embedding pre-training, the problem becomes given a document with metadata, and we have their pre-trained embeddings, how to encode the document to a representation vector. Here we adopt the transformer encoder, which is proved to be powerful in encoding a sequence of words. Uh, it adopts a fully connected attention mechanism uh, that is basically learn the weight of each context word given the center word. And the question is how to add metadata. Given the fully connected attention mechanism, we can simply concatenate all the CRS tokens, metadata instances, and text as the input into transformer. We give an example here. Uh, this is the paper graph structure in the web. And uh, in the input se sequence, we first have multiple CRS tokens. I will explain why we need multiple tokens in the next slide. Followed by uh, its value information, authors, references, and words. And the fully connected attention mechanism will enable interaction between text and metadata. Uh, and we can stack multiple transformer layers. Uh, for example, in match, we use a three layer transformer architecture. So after our transformer layers, we get the final representation of each token. Then the problem becomes how to get the final document representation. Uh, we simply concatenate the final state of all CLS tokens to get the final document representation. Uh, then let me answer the question, why do we need multiple CIS tokens? Uh, this is inspired by this KDD 2020 work. Actually, one CIS token, uh, for example, a 100 dimensional vector, may not be informative enough to predict the relevant labels in a large space. For example, tens of thousands of labels. Therefore, if we have multiple CIS tokens, the final representation will be uh, longer and more expressive. And the final layer is then connected to the sigmoid functions corresponding to all the labels. For example, the output of the uh, first sigmoid function here denotes the probability that the document should be tagged with computer science. And finally, we train the model by minimizing the cross entropy loss. The last part is hypernomy regularization. 
Unlike flat text classification, if we have a hierarchy, then labels are correlated with each other. For example, child categories usually have less training data, but it can get hints from the parent categories. And also, if we know the paper belongs to a child category, very likely it will also belong to the parent category. Based on these two ideas, we propose two kinds of regularization terms. In the parameter space, inspired by the first idea, we adopt an L2 norm penalty to enforce the parameters of each label to be similar with its parents. The intuition here is that judging whether a document can be tagged with crawling should bear similarities with judging it is whether it is related to the parent node, World Wide Web. And in output space, we model an asymmetric relationship between parent and child labels. The intuition here is that if there is a 50 chance a paper will be labeled with crawling, then the chance to label this paper with World Wide Web should be at least 50% because the paper may be labeled with siblings of crawling. So the final objective is a weighted sum of cross-entropy, parameter regularization, and output regularization. Now we would like to show our experimental results. We use two data sets, both from the academic paper domain. The first one is extracted from the Microsoft Academic Graph. It has papers published in 105 top CS conferences from 1990 to 2020. And for each paper, we remove its labels that are not in the CS domain. For the PubMed dataset, uh, it contains 150 top medicine journals from 2010 to 2020. And each paper is uh, related to several mesh terms, which are viewed as labels. We have made the two datasets publicly available. And also following previous studies in extreme text classification, we use precision at 135 and NDCG at 135 as evaluation metrics. For baselines, we include both extreme multi-label text classification methods and transformer-based methods. So all these baselines, their implementation can be found in these two GitHub repositories. Also, we create two ablations no metadata and no hierarchy because uh, we actually use these two kinds of additional signals in our framework. Here is the performance on MaxCS. We can see that first match consistently outperforms the baselines. Uh, in almost all cases, the gap is statistically significant. Second, the full match model outperforms the two ablation versions indicating that both metadata and hierarchy are beneficial to the classification performance. Third, even without metadata, our match framework can outperform transformer and star transformer, uh, which also uses text only. This indicates that our large-scale training set is sufficient to train a multi-layer transformer architecture from scratch, taking classification as the downstream task. On PubMed, most observations on MagCS still hold. However, we would like to uh, emphasize one difference. So here, the benefit of hyponymy regularization is not significant. Uh, the possible reason could be that the effect of hyponymy regularization depends on the correlation between parent and child labels. However, on PubMed, human annotators sometimes only select those more specific categories while ignoring their parents. We also did an ablation study to check the effect of specific metadata. So instead of ignoring all of them, we can overlook one specific type. And the conclusion is that all of them have positive contribution. However, value information is the most helpful one uh, in, in almost all cases, and it is quite helpful for top one prediction which is usually a coarse grained category, such as natural language processing. However, the contribution of authors and references become evident for top three and top five predictions, which are usually more fine grained, such as named anti recognition and relation extraction, which value information is not enough to predict. To qualitatively show the effect of metadata and hierarchy, we also conduct case studies. 
So here for each paper, we show its ground truth labels and top five predictions of transformer, match no hierarchy, and match. Uh, so this paper, we can see both venue and also information indicate it is related to information retrieval. A match and match no hierarchy can see the metadata information, so they predict information retrieval correctly. However, transformer cannot see the metadata information, so it misses information retrieval and makes a wrong prediction. In the second case, the paper is related to a fine grained topic language model and to broader categories, speech recognition and natural language processing. So here, language model is specifically contained in the text, so all three methods can predict it correctly. However, natural language processing is not mentioned, uh, but it can be indicated by the hierarchy information. Here, match can see the hierarchy, so it picks natural language processing. However, match no hierarchy and transformer cannot see the hierarchy, so they miss natural language processing and uh, give a wrong prediction discriminating model. To conclude our work, first we formalize the problem of text classification with both metadata and large-scale hierarchy information, which are not usually not simultaneously modeled in existing studies. And to incorporate both signals, we design the match framework. We conduct extensive experiments on two large-scale datasets, MaxCS and PubMed, to demonstrate the effectiveness of our framework and its design choices. For future work, first it is interesting to study the contribution of various metadata in different domains and how to automatically select the metadata that are helpful to the classification task. Second, it is interesting to explore more complicated document encoder architectures, which can jointly leverage metadata and the hierarchy. That's all for our presentation. Thank you. Uh, again, datasets and code related to this paper are publicly available. Please refer to this GitHub repository. Thank you.